Once we verify that we're generating a healthy spark, the next important thing is to make sure that that spark within the pilot arrangement is occurring where it's designed to be. So we want to inspect the wiring going to our igniter. We want to make sure we don't have wear or rubbing or burn marks on this because as you can see, it could rub across that brass and uh, degrade the insulation. We could get an ignition spark here. Well, we don't have any fuel there, so that's not gonna be successful. So eventually we've got to look within the pilot assembly itself. And the key to any pilot assembly is making sure that we've got that spark arranged the way that the manufacturer intended. So if we look at this, um, we can see that the spark igniter is centered on the gas spud and we can actually see carbon in there as a result of that being fuel rich at the spark. And that carbon to me tells me that I don't have a great mixture at the spark, so it reduces the likelihood of successful light off. But we can also get carbon bridging or threading between the electrode and the surface. So this igniter, based on the manual diagram, should actually be rotated so that it's not arcing off of the fuel spud in there, but actually off the bottom housing. So it should be an eighth of an inch off of the bottom metal plate. And the depth is also important um, because they obviously designed these with some intent. So refer to the manual on your burner to make sure you've got that pilot assembly in the right location. And, and frankly, if you've got a reliable pilot, it's not bad to take that opportunity to pull the pilot assembly, take some internal photos, and make sure when it's working, you know, we can see what that looks like. So that if somebody yanks or moves or if the part gets loose, we can reorient it back to that factory spot. 